Hi everyone, I'm Tamara Wade, owner and broker of Remax True and the team leader for the Tamara Wade team. I've had a lot of people ask me lately what I feel is going on in the market. People like brokers, agents, the public, the agents that are within our brokerage and our staff. So what I wanted to do is share with you a presentation. I've done some research on what's going on and I think what you're going to see is gonna also help you understand where we are and what our future looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my presentation and share it with everyone. So the first things first, what we need to be focused on primarily right now is how serious this virus is. As of today, um, it's hit an all time high is my understanding here in the United States and we've surpassed China and um, Italy. So we definitely gotta take the social distancing, um, how to, make sure that we're washing our hands, keeping that six foot rule, everything and anything we can to protect our family, our friends, we need to be doing right now. So, you know, at these times we're the most vulnerable and there's a lot of concern that's out there. Hang on. Okay, so what we need to do is stop looking at what's going on today as if it's gonna be something like we experienced in 2008. The crisis that we are feeling right now is more like 9-11. What 9-11 has in common with what is happening today is the shock has also generated fear, anxiety among the general public. So like I was saying, we're all scared. We all really don't know what this is. Our parents and our parents' parents probably haven't experienced some of these things. So the same parts of the economy are under pressure as they were in 9-11. Airlines, leisure, hospitality, restaurants, entertainment, consumer discretionary services in general. What is a recession? So it is a significant decline in the economic activity spread across the market, lasting more than a few months. Normally visible in real GDP, real income, employment, industrial production, and wholesale retail sales. How long are we in for this? Well, the US will bounce back as it always does. Right now, what they're, they're forecasting is that we will bounce back around the end of the year, third and fourth quarter, of seeing about a three to 4% expansion in the last few months and leading into 2020. Um, it is still definitely expected to bounce back positively. What is Wells Fargo saying right now? Well, they don't ex expect a repeat of the severe recession of 2008 and 2009. And they provide three conditions that ultimately determine the length and se severity of a global recession. They do not expect that recession because of 2008 and 2009 because the virus and oil shocks are not endemic to the financial system, but rather external. Once the virus infection rate peaks, we expect a recovery to gain momentum in the final quarter of the year, like what I just said in the previous slide. Um, so provided everything that they're saying right now goes that way, we're looking at a better end of the year. What does the national home index, price index say? So if you look at the last five recessions that we've had, 1980, 1981, 1991, 2001, and 2008. What you're gonna see is home price changes during most of those recessions increased anywhere from 3.5 to 6.6%. .6 in 1991, we did have a small decrease of about 1.9. In 2008, that's where we saw a big decrease of about 19.7. And you can also see on the um, SMP Case Shiller US National Home Price Index graph. Over here, you can see also what happened with regards to the home prices. Basically, there's that decrease that we all saw. That is where at that point we saw the short sales and we saw the foreclosures and everything. Mortgage standards are not like they were back then. So during the housing bubble, it was difficult not to get a mortgage. Basically, if you could breathe on a mirror, you could get a mortgage. Today, it's tough to qualify. The Mortgage Bankers Association releases a mortgage credit availability index, which is a summary measure which indicates the availability, 
second talk, the availability of mortgage credit at this point in time. The higher the index, the easier it is to get a mortgage. As shown below, during the housing bubble, the index skyrocketed. Currently, the index shows how getting a mortgage is even more difficult than it was before the bubble. So you can see the housing, you can see the housing bubble, and then you can see where it is today. So definitely a big difference. Prices are not soaring out of control. In the next slide is a graph showing annual house appreciation over the past six years, compared to the six years leading up to the height of the housing bubble. Though price appreciation has been quite strong recently, it is nowhere near the rise in prices that preceded the crash. There's a stark difference between these two periods of time. Normal appreciation is 3.6. So while current appreciation is higher, it's above four, then the historic norm is certainly not accelerating beyond control as it did in early 2000s. So you can see right here in the early 2000s, the home appreciations ran anywhere from 6.5% to 12.5%. This is where I was newer in the industry at that time, and it just amazed me how much prices were going up. And then what we've seen is it leveling off. In 2014, we had a spike in 2017. In 2019, now we're at 4.7. So we're still above the average of 3.6. We don't have a surplus of homes on the market. We have a shortage. So the months of supply of inventory needs to sustain a normal real estate market. Is an approx and a normal real estate market is approximately 6%. Anything more than that is an overabundance and will cause prices to de depreciate. And anything less than that is a shortage, which is what we have right now, and will lead to continued appreciation. As the next graph shows, there were too many homes for sale in 2007, and that caused prices to tumble. So what was going on? On right could get loans and there were builders at that time were just building and building and building. I recall being in a new home subdivision at that time selling houses and I had over 30 inventory houses. So houses that were under construction, not yet sold, available for sale to the public. And it was just a frenzy. We had RVs overnight waiting for subdivisions to open so they could come in and buy houses. I recall one weekend in a neighborhood that I was in, we sold 69 houses our first weekend. So it was an absolute crazy market. And at that time, I remember never thinking it was going to stop and that this was the most amazing thing I could be doing with my life is to be in the real estate industry. So then the, the bubble hit and I saw that there could be a different, a different way of how things go in the real estate market. But I learned a lot then too. So Today, there's a shortage of inventory, which is causing an acceleration in home values. So back before the, the bubble, there was about 8.2 months of inventory. Today, there's about 3.1 months of inventory. So houses became too expensive to buy. The, afford the affordability, affordability formula has three components, the price of the home, the wages earned by the purchaser, and the mortgage rate available at the time. 14 years ago, prices were high, wages were low, and mortgage rates were over 6%. Today, prices are still high. Wages, however, have increased, and the mortgage rate is about 35 to 4%. That means the average family play, pays less of their monthly income towards their mortgage payment and as they, and than they did back then, so um, back before the bubble. And so here's a graph showing the difference. So the percent of medium income needed to purchase a medium priced home back in 2006 was 25.4 percent whereas today it's about 15.5 percent so the great thing is people aren't using all their money um, that they've got to put into their home their mortgage payment every month people are people at the time before the bubble um, were not equity rich Basically, they were, they were everything they were tapping out. They were using their homes as an ATM machine. They were withdrawing their equity, and what they were doing is they were not reinvesting it back in their house. They were going out and they were buying cars and taking vacations and basically doing whatever they wanted to do with it. Um, so prices have risen nicely over the last few years, leading to over 50% of the homes in the country having greater than 50% equity. 
but owners have not been tapping into it like they did, they did back then. So there's a table that I'm gonna show you next, comparing the equity withdrawal over the last three years compared to 2005, 2006, and 2007. Ca homeowners at that time had cashed out over $824 billion in their houses, whereas today they have cashed out $232 billion, so about a quarter of what it was back then. So again, there's equity in the houses that we have right now, whereas back then there weren't. What to expect? So historical data is on our side. It says we are going to have great growth and that the stock market, stock market needed a disinflation, so this could be it. Um, and it's time to adapt and overcome. The slowdown is part of an economic cycle. Take advantage of the rates. Rates are historically low. In early March, the Mortgage Bankers Association reported the refinancing applications jumped 79% week over week. So that meant that rates were so good that people at that point were saying, you know what, I wanna go ahead and refinance my mortgage. At the end of all this, our, our country will get through this. We always do. We gotta remember, be smart, be kind, and support your local community. Please follow our pages, the Tamer Way team and Remax True, as we continue to bring you information on the market. Thank you for joining me.